What's going on guys and gals? This is Auto Tech and welcome back for another video on this Tiger 800 XCA. Today we're going to be showing you something of actual relevance. Today we're going to be doing the valve adjust and cam timing. You've probably seen that in your service manual where it mentions cam timing. Now that is actually an important procedure and it does really affect your um, intake vacuum. So if you find your bike stalls easy or it's not idling quite the same that it was, your cam timing might very well be the issue. So if you're joining in right now, you're probably already got your valve cover off. You're probably already like at this point. Go ahead, get an oil bucket underneath your engine, get a couple of rags pushed into here, and then we're gonna take out the eight millimeter bolts for this front cover. Two of them are different, but the two of them that are different go with the dowels. So don't worry about it, just take them all out, and then when you go to put it back on, you'll be able to see exactly where the two of them go. Now that you got all those bolts removed, you'll see that there's like a little bit of a lip here on your timing cover. If you hook a screwdriver in behind that, you can just pop the uh, cover out, and then you'll be able to just get your fingers behind it. And as you notice, oil starts coming out. So that's why you want to have your oil drain bucket, a couple of rags in there. Otherwise it all goes in your skid plate, gets all over your exhaust. But go ahead, get this cover off and then uh, just set it off to the side. So you might have a little bit of gasket material stuck to it. All you're going to do is just use a razor blade, lightly scrape that off. And then the best place to wash this is actually in your kitchen sink with some dish soap. Uh, maybe wipe off the excess oil before you go and do that, just so you don't get yourself into trouble. Um, you know, I wouldn't know I'm not married, so I wash this stuff in my sink all the time. But, uh, you know, if you guys are married, I'm looking out for you. Now, before you get too far ahead of yourself, take a 5 8 spark plug socket and go ahead and remove all three spark plugs. The reason you want to remove the spark plugs is because it makes it easier to rotate the engine over and then it's actually part of your 20k service is to replace the spark plugs. Uh, now if your spark plug sockets are getting a little bit worn out like mine, have no fear, just use a little magnet and then you can get right into there. Ooh, that's a nice looking spark plug. All right, so before we get going and starting to measure the um, valve lash, I just want to show you that I don't do it necessarily by the book, and I, and I want to show you why, and it's easier to do it on paper. Basically, when, when you want to measure the valve lash is when the cam is at the base circle. So now when you look at your camshaft, it's got a similar shape to this, and it's got a distinct section that's kind of like flat. That is your base circle. It sits on top of your bucket, which sits on top of a shim, which is what actually sits on top of the valve. So when you're measuring the lash here, you're actually going to be replacing this shim. So now what we're going to be doing is we will rotate the engine in such a way that we watch for when this is perfectly straight up and down like this and you're on the base circle. That is when we take our feeler gauge and slip it through if that makes sense if you're uncomfortable doing it that way like if you're not a hundred percent on like following it like that the work instructions do show you you set your cam to a certain position and then from there you turn it another so many degrees i think my way is much better but let's get to it so um i just wanted to check something on this bike before i proceeded a little bit further usually we wouldn't do this till the end but what we did was we lined up the timing marks the um, crankshaft alignment tool slides into its special little uh, slot and then uh, from there we went to see if we could install the cam holding tool just to see how far out those camshafts were. So as you see, this intake one lined up perfectly. It slid right in. This exhaust one is actually quite a ways out. Like we're probably gonna have to rotate that cam, I don't know, maybe like a 16th of a turn, which when you're dealing with, you know, degrees of camshaft, that's actually quite a bit. So you can see that after like 21K, it definitely does need a cam timing adjustment, which we will do when we go back together. All right, so before you go ahead and get jamming those in there, this is absolutely 100% crucial. Do not screw up from here on out. You will wreck your engine and you will die, maybe. 
The spec, because we're in Canada and we're the only country that matters, we're gonna use millimeters. The exhaust is 0.325 to 0.375 millimeters. That means if you're all the way down here at this end of it, you're tight. If you're all the way up at this end of it, you're loose. The goal is to be right in the middle, so at 0.35. For the intake, it's 0.1 millimeters or 0.2 millimeters. Same thing, if you're at this side of it, you're tight. If you're this side of it, you're loose. Now, the actual cylinder identification isn't as important as long as you remember exactly which one it is. So I go front and then I just go away from me. And what you're going to do is as you take each measurement. Now, we're gonna start here at this cylinder, cylinder number three, just because it's the easiest to get to. We're gonna go ahead and check that. And then when you do your two exhaust ones, you write down your two measurements. When you do your two intake ones, you write down your two measurements. And what I mean by your measurements is your feeler gauges are gonna be in different sizes. So like this one right here, I've already got 0.35 ready to go. So if this one fits in and it's got a nice drag on it, it's not forcing in and it doesn't just flop in, that means we're right where we need to be. So this actually isn't very easy to do with the camera. So I'm just trying to show you here that this intake lobe is pointing straight up and down. And then I've got my 0.15 millimeter feeler gauge. And you're gonna go ahead and try and push that in there. And since it doesn't just easily slide in there, that means that it is a little bit tighter. So then from there, I'm gonna go to my 0.13 uh, feeler gauge. And then if that slides in there, so now that slips in there and it's got just a touch of drag to it. So this one is a touch on the tight side. So what I would do then is I will then check the one beside it, which probably won't show up very well. And that one is the same thing. So then I would come over to my sheet. And once I you know, clean up my fingers a little bit here, get the oil off, I'm gonna write down 0.13, put a slash 0.13. So then I know that these two valves are 0.13 each. Then rotate the engine over until the next set of cam lobes are pointing straight up and down. It might be this one, it might be this one over here, just watch for it. Or if you want, you can just keep rotating it until this is the next one and then keep rotating it until this is the next one. Work through, get all of these measurements. All right, so now that you've worked through all of your valves and got all of your measurements, Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to adjust these ones, this one, and all of the exhaust ones. All of my exhaust valves, or his exhaust valves, are well below spec. We're coming in at 0.300, where they were supposed to be at 0.325 or higher. And then for the intake, yes, these 0.1s are within spec, but they're not. If we're gonna be removing the camshafts, we might as well just reshim them, get them good. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Um, to get your new shim, the way that you do that is you take the valve lash that you measured minus it by the specification plus the old shim. That's a whole lot of science right there and math. One of the easiest things to do is to just look and see if you need to go two or one. <laughs> so for this one right here, I'm gonna change like the shim just one size, one size, one size. And then for all of the exhausts, I'll change them two sizes. I just wanted to show you that before we get into it. Um, now what we're going to do though is before you go and take your parts off, go ahead and loosen these cam bolts. So I'm gonna need two hands for this. And uh, so we're gonna, uh, Loosen these two, rotate the engine slightly, loosen the other two. Don't bother removing them just yet. You can remove them once the cams are out of the engine. But remember to loosen these before they're out. Now that you got all four bolts loose, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our crankshaft alignment pin 
and we're gonna just find top dead center. I had made sure that the cams were somewhat close before I started, just so that we don't have to move the engine a whole lot. So we'll just have to back it up until we either find the spot. There it goes. All right, it's in. So now your crank is perfectly where it needs to be. Don't touch it anymore after that. One other thing to show you real quick. If you look in this window down here, you'll notice that there is a dot and a paint mark on your crankshaft. And that is going to line up with a little mark here. Now the cam pins or the crank pin is already in, so don't worry about it, but I just thought I'd show you that. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna work out this tensioner after we put like a small screwdriver handle just to hold the chain. So let's see if we can grab one here. So you take your small screwdriver. No, that's not small enough. Perfect. No, that's still not small enough. Find the base of a screwdriver that's gonna fit in there and you just wanna push it in so that it keeps a little bit of tension on that chain. And then we're gonna take these two bolts out, working them evenly. Okay, once you get the tensioner out, you're safe to just hold your finger on the chain, remove your little block, or slowly work it out. I mean, your crank's locked, your cams aren't really gonna go anywhere. Now for a little bit more of a tedious thing, we're gonna unbolt this cam plate. You wanna start from the outside and work in a circular motion, just a quarter turn at a time. Loosen all of those bolts, loosen them all the way, and then we'll be able to lift that cover up. All right, sorry about that guys. I got a little bit ahead of myself and I didn't uh, take the video of it. You want to remove this chain guide once you get all the bolts out of that plate up there. And to do that, just kind of pull this little retainer dowel pin out and then the chain guide will like fall right out of it. So now that you've got pretty well all your bolts out, apparently my assistant does not have all the bolts out. I'll check back in with you. <laughs> all right, so once you finally do get all those bolts out of there, go ahead, grab your cam plate, and then you're gonna kind of rock it. But don't get too crazy with it because there are dowels and O-rings that go underneath it. So just rock it a little bit, get it to lift up. And then you should be able to just remove that right out the front there. And then we're gonna flip it. Okay, all the dowels are there, but as you can see, one of the O-rings stuck to this. So just keep in mind where they are, if they're all in your engine or if they all uh, stuck to the plate. So set this off to the side somewhere where it's not gonna get hurt or covered in dirt. And then from there, you are good to unhook your chain and get your camshafts out of there. These camshafts are one position. So do not screw that up. If you put these in the wrong place, it's done. What I did is I actually marked an I and an I so that I knew that it was the intake. We're gonna go ahead and do that with the exhaust one as well. Let your chain drop, don't worry. This bolt will hold the chain so it's not gonna go missing on you. Okay, so apparently, I messed up. Luckily it was caught nice and early. So we're gonna go ahead and change this one to exhaust. <laughs> and then we're gonna mark the other one intake. Because yes, this is the exhaust side, this is the intake side. Sorry about that. Okay, so now for the next part coming up, this is where you need to be very careful, like very important that you do not drop anything or screw anything up and remember where you're working. I only do one at a time. So what I do is I use a magnet, I grab the bucket, slowly work it up. And as you notice, the shim actually came with it. The shim will quite often stick to the bucket because of the oil. That's where this magnet comes in handy because then it just extra keeps it there. The reason I bring that up is I've seen several posts where people were lifting them out with their fingers or a pair of pliers for some reason and one of the shims falls in and it will go all the way into the engine 
and never be seen again. At that point, I don't know what you should do uh, other than cry. So go ahead, get that shim out or get that bucket out, get the shim out. Now on your shim, there will be a marking. It's in millimeters because that's the only measurement that matters. This one here is 242. And if you look in your shim kit, my next size down would actually be a 240. However, we will go to a 235 just because we don't really have to go that far with this one. We're going to repeat this process for every single one. If you pull one out and it's like a 255 and you need to go a fairly large amount, go to a 245. The smaller you make the shim, the bigger you make the lash. Hopefully that makes sense because when you change the size of this shim, you move where the bucket is that the camshaft's riding on. So take your time, be careful. When it comes to putting in these new shims, what I like to do is I like to use the magnet and then get it into that valve follower and use my finger and get the magnet out of there. Then put the bucket back in. All right, so just to show you that, I take the magnet and there you have it, that is in. And then I clean the bucket up. And pop that back in there. So now that one is done. So if you want to, you can actually just like write down that you put in a 2.40 if you want to, or you can just leave it. But let's get them all done and then uh, we will check back in. All right, so I couldn't leave well enough alone. So even the ones that were in spec, I went ahead and just dropped them a valve or um, a shim just so that they're gonna be even closer to the middle of the spec. Now what you're gonna do is now that you got all your shims in there, all your buckets in there, you're going to replace all of these O-rings. Now be careful, I mean, they won't. these O-rings won't really fall in the engine, but all you do is you just pop them out and pop the new ones in. Just like that. Magic. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your cams that you've got marked correctly, and you're going to fish your chain out of there and just kind of hold it up with your hand. Get your cam in there, get it set in. And what you want is you want the chain to be tight all the way up the side of that uh, guide. And then you get the sprocket on and you want the sprocket to be the bolt to be roughly in the center of the slot with the alignment mark somewhat close. After that, after we get the other one in, we're going to go ahead and install the cam timing tool and that will set the cam exactly where it needs to be. Then we worry about the um, sprockets after we get the cam plate back on. So go ahead and screw around with that other cam. Okay, now that you got your cam somewhat in the right area, go ahead and get your alignment tool situated in there. Eventually, come on now, get in there. All right, the alignment tool is in. You'll know it's in because it's all the way in those notches and then it's sitting uh, just pretty well flush with the cam, so. Now we're going to install that top plate and get all the bolts put back in. Um, just get them all in and get them finger tight. So I forgot to mention, um, these little dowels decided to stay with this uh, upper cam plate. So what you wanna do is just pull these out with your fingers and then go ahead and slide them into their proper location. Uh, I just do that so that when I'm like putting it back in, there's no chance of them falling out. All right, once you got all them bolts in there finger tight, what you're gonna do is from the inside, outside, inside working to outside, you're gonna just go a little bit at a time, get that plate to fully seat. Um, 
the reason the plate doesn't just like touch right down is because there's actually a little bit of tension on the cam uh, just because certain lobes are up and whatnot so you want those to seat down uh, then you're going to go through the same process from inside to outside doing five newton meters then one more time to 10 newton meters you have to torque that in two stages and then personally i do one more again at 10 newton meters just to make sure i got them all perfectly all right while he's working on torquing that cam plate i'm gonna go ahead and get the triumph tensioner tool installed and the way that i do that is i get the tool set up it comes in two pieces then you take the old bolts from your tensioner put them through and install this in the spot where your tensioner goes if you've got this far enough back it won't hit that um, guide for the chain so don't worry about that you'll still be able to get the guide in or put your guide in then install this uh, just for time's sake and since there's two of us doing this at the moment I'm going to install this right now all right while well, he finishes up with his final pass there I've gone ahead and got that um, tensioner tool somewhat in there. You're gonna need a long ball headed six millimeter Allen. You're gonna need this like drill chuck adapter for a three eighths. And then you're gonna need a 0.6 Newton meter torque wrench. I got this one off Amazon. This is basically the only non triumph tools I have. They sell you one specifically for this tensioner however it's very expensive so just get this off amazon and it's going to be uh probably about a fifth of the price all right so all you're going to do is just keep threading this in you've got your torque wrench set up to where you want it uh, it does actually go quite a ways in there so don't be alarmed you will start to see this guide moving and the chain getting a little bit tighter that's good though Go until this tightens, and there we have it. We're at six Newton meters. The work instructions are actually very specific about not over tightening this, so don't over tighten it. You can probably guess what happens now. We've got the crank locked, the cams are locked, the chain is tensioned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts and we're gonna put two new bolts in and torque them to 22 Newton meters. Just do the two of them, make sure they're torqued and then we're gonna check back in. All right, so now that we have those two bolts torqued, what we're going to do is we're going to come around to this side of the timing tool and all you're going to do is just thread in that rod and pop the tool out. The rod will push against that cam plate and slowly work it out. Um, there's not much tension on it, but definitely do not use a screwdriver and just pop that out of there. Use the tool the way it is intended. And now we are going to go ahead and remove the crank tool. Triumph does call this the camshaft holding tool. It does not hold the camshafts, it holds the crankshaft. I don't know why they call it that. But now, we're going to rotate the engine just until we can get those other two bolts out. And then we'll put the new ones in and torque them to 22 Newton meters. Okay, so now that you've got those other two bolts in there and torqued, re-rotate the engine back to top dead center. Make sure that your camshaft or crankshaft pin goes in and then make sure that your camshafts are lined up. And as you can see, the two timing marks are perfectly lined up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get something to wedge this. You have to keep tension on this now, this is important. And then we're going to back out and remove this tensioner. Do not let the chain skip because one of your cams will jump out of the way on you. Keep tension on this. All right, so in order to reset this tensioner, if you flip it onto its side here, you're going to notice that there's these two hooks. Squeeze these two hooks together and then squeeze this all the way in. And then you're going to see up at the top here, there is like a little snap ring 
that will catch it once you get it all the way in and then uh, it'll hold it in place which I missed it so do a little bit of playing with it get that all the way in there and get that to hold all right so it took me a couple of minutes but I was able to get this to compress down and catch as you can see, this upper snap ring is barely holding on to the thing. <laughs> so you're gonna go ahead and replace this gasket. If you notice, the little indent part here goes out towards here. Uh, this one's a little bit squished down, but you'll see it on the new one. There's like a little pocket up here. And then you're also going to replace the O-ring. Okay, now that you've got your tensioner all torqued in there, go ahead and get your wedge out of there. Hold it with your hand, like just keep some good tension on it. And then you're going to rotate the engine over. Do it a couple of times. And the tensioner should have let go by that point. There we go. So now I'm just going to rotate it a couple more times and then I'm going to line it up, make sure that my timing marks are good. All right, so it's your choice, but um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next and you're probably going to hate me for it. We're going to recheck these valve clearances. So go ahead, get your feeler gauges out and get rotating it around and make sure you are within spec. All right, so I went ahead, checked all of the valve clearances. I don't mean to brag but I got every single intake in the middle, perfectly in the middle. The exhaust, on the other hand, I probably could have done with one more shim size. So I'm just gonna tell you right now, if you're coming up with this 0 .30 number on your initial measurement, drop your shim size three steps if you're using that hot cam kit. Um, because I'm in spec now, but I'm not like perfectly in the middle where I would have liked to have been. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to install the spark plugs. And the best way to do that is just with a little, little magnet, get it in there, get it started. Oh, that one didn't start that time. <laughs> and then you're going to torque these to 12 Newton meters. So go ahead and get that um, crankcase all cleaned up, get a new gasket on your timing cover. Remember that the two long bolts go where the dowels go and you're going to torque all of these in a nice crisscross pattern to 10 newton meters. So now that you've got your timing chain cover on, go ahead, get your valve cover gasket surface cleaned up. You're going to put a little smear of silicone or RTV just on these hard edges. Then put your new gasket onto the valve or the head. Then you're going to put the um, valve cover on and torque that to 10 newton meters this is pretty well everything i'm going to show you for this video the main thing i wanted to capture was the checking the valves the timing of the camshafts and the changing of the shims i do have a valve cover video that shows the removal so you could just watch that in reverse for the actual install of this but i think we've covered everything that we're going to cover for this one so now you understand what the timing and camshaft adjustment is that your service manual is talking about. I know when you browse the forums, there's a lot of guys saying that it's not important. It is a relatively cheap tool. All of these tools from Triumph were very affordable. They just took a little bit of time to get here. The most expensive one was probably the camshaft timing plate, and that one was still less than $100 Canadian. If you're new to this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for taking the time and watching.